my misfortune is that i am interested in too many things and not decisively committed to any one thing to which i might subordinate everything else it has always been the life of reason and freedom which has most interested me and it has always been my wish that i might solve the mystery of life the forty years in the wilderness before i could enter into the promised land of science appear to me too precious so much the more since i have an idea that nature may also be viewed from another side without requiring an insight into the secrets of science in a particular flower i may train myself to see the whole world or i may listen to the many hints and suggestions which nature offers with respect to human life theology would seem to be the sphere to which my interest most clearly inclines me but my theological studies have hitherto met with the greatest difficulties within christianity itself such great contrasts present themselves as at least to place obstacles in the way of an impartial survey orthodoxy i have so to speak been brought up in but as soon as i began to think for myself the huge colossus began to tumble i call it purposely a colossus for it has in the main much inner consistency and in the course of centuries the individual parts of it have been so fused together that it is hard to come to close quarters with them simply as isolated features there are individual points on which i might be able to reach an agreement with the orthodox doctrine but these would then have to be regarded as the green sprouts which may sometimes be found growing in the cleft of the barren rock on the other hand i might possibly be able to discern the errors and perversities present at other points but the foundation itself i would have to hold for a time in dubio if the foundation were to be changed the whole would of course have to be viewed in a different light and so my attention is drawn to rationalism but rationalism seems to me to cut a very sorry figure in so far indeed as the reason consistently follows its own impulses and spirit in the attempt to clear up the relation between god and the world and in so far as it thus considers man in his deepest and most intimate relationship with god and hence also comes to take christianity into account from its own standpoint as the religion which for so many centuries has satisfied man's deepest religious need in so far indeed no objection can be urged against it but this is not what rationalism proceeds to do it takes its essential coloring from christianity and hence stands on an entirely different footing it is not a system but a noah's ark wherein the clean and the unclean animals lie down side by side it makes about the same impression on me as the civilian guard we formerly had here in denmark beside the royal potsdam guard it seeks essentially to base itself upon the scriptures and sends a legion of scriptural passages before it at every point but the exposition and development is not itself saturated with this consciousness the rationalistic theologians behave like canvases who in campaigning against egypt sent the sacred fowls and cats before him but like the roman consul they are quite ready to throw the sacred animals overboard when these refuse to eat what i really need however is a clear mind regarding what i ought to do not so much as to what i ought to know except in so far as some sort of knowledge precedes all doing i need to understand my place in life and to see what call the divine power has for me i need to discover a truth which is a truth for me i need to find the idea for which i can live and die for what would it profit me if i discovered some so-called objective truth if i worked my way through all the philosophical systems and could pass them in review when necessary or if i were able to point out the inconsistencies within each particular school of thought what would it profit me if i were able to develop a theory of the state to combine scattered facts gathered from many sources into a totality and thus construe a world in which i did not live but only held up to the gaze of others what would it profit me if i could expound the significance of christianity and explain many of its particular phenomena if it had no deeper significance for me and for my life 
What I need is the power to live a complete human life, and not merely a life of knowledge, lest I come to base my thought upon something so-called objective, in any case something not my own. I need something that is connected with the deepest root of my existence, something through which I am linked, so to speak, with the divine and to which I could cling even if the whole world were to fall in ruins about me.